y'all, it's Laura, and welcome back to another Bella Boulevard process video. This time we are diving into the Our Love Song collection, which is the kind of love-themed, not entirely Valentine's Day themed, but very much love themed collection from Bella Boulevard. It's one of their newest ones and it is beautiful. I absolutely love, love, love the mix of rainbows and hearts and music in this one. It's just really, really fun. So the theme we were supposed to be using this time was circles and acetate. And so I do have some beautiful acetate frames over here on the left side that I created using my frame dies, my circle frame dies, and the beautiful acetate clear cuts from Bella Boulevard. It has a bunch of little hearts on it and it matches perfectly to this collection. And so I did that off camera because I had to go a little wild with my die cutter. I don't know if you've tried to cut acetate, but it is tricky. And I, in the end, had to kind of trim it out even still a little bit more because it wouldn't cut all the way through. Now I could have added probably more pressure uh, by adding more levels, more to the sandwich that goes through my Sizzix. But I didn't want to put that much pressure on my dies and potentially damage them. So instead, I just decided to go ahead and cut them out. Uh, it had created the lines I needed and that was good enough. Acetate is tricky to cut simply because it does, in fact, bend. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really want to cut through. It wants to just bend and form to whatever you're attempting to create. Now for this layout, again, going with those circles, I decided to go ahead and punch out some circles from my pattern paper scraps. And the navy paper you, I'm using here is one of the Bella Besties graph paper. I think it's graph and dot potentially. And it is blueberries. It's a nice, dark, rich navy blue. And it works perfectly with this collection, as do all the besties. I love the fact that the collections are so well coordinated. They don't feel like they're always the same, but they have a lot of similar color schemes. And so you can kind of mix and match between them. And I really enjoy that. So I do have my little circle frames in the background and I'm piling on some larger, or smaller circles, kind of medium sized circles. And then I punched out some smaller circles around those little hearts from the pattern paper as well. Now, one of the things that I find really helpful when doing a scattered design like this background is, it's not one solid piece of paper. It's a mix of bits and pieces to create the background design. I call that scattered. And one of the things I find really helpful to make that feel more cohesive is to repeat the design. So up at the top, we have a piece of the rainbow paper. We have the circle frame. We have a piece of the blue paper and a heart. I've done that same clustering for all three photos, and that helps them to have a more cohesive and put together look. It just looks like it's supposed to be there. Everything is intentional. Now with this design, I actually knew more or less ahead of time what I wanted to do with it. And so I was able to kind of visualize it in my head. That doesn't always happen. <laughs> to be honest, that rarely happens. Quite often, I just pick up a couple pieces of paper and go, no, nah, this looks good, and we just see what happens. But in this case, I actually did have a kind of an idea of what I wanted to do, and so I just gave it a go. Started putting things down, and it worked pretty well. Now, these photos, you might be looking at them and going, hmm, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> My twins had gotten a makeup set. Well, specifically, Olivia had gotten a makeup set, and she's the blonde at the bottom. And she is a huge fan of watching YouTubers who do those, like, really fancy makeup tutorials, like, really, like, costume makeup tutorials, and she finds it fascinating. And so my lovely mother-in-law decided to get her her own makeup set. Now, she is nine, and she did not know what to do with it and more or less made a mess. But it's okay because she was exploring, trying something new, and we like to encourage that in our kids. And uh, Sophia decided to join in. And so she did some makeup on her face as well. And it was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> An adorable mess, but a mess all the same. Now I've pulled out my whole reinforcer punch, which I just call a donut punch. <laughs> but every time somebody pops into the comments to remind me what it's called, because I don't usually remember that it is for whole reinforcers. And I had that little cut apart piece that had this beautiful teal on it. And I really wanted a little bit of that 
for these tiny little details that I'm adding around the outside. So this is some of my scattering, which is one of the details that I add at the very end of a layout to kind of finish it off and give it a more complete look. I personally really like the idea of using large, medium, and then very small embellishments just to add a little bit of interest to a page. Now I have these two pieces of acetate left over that I cut off the edge there, as you saw, and so I'm just going to tape them down at the top and bottom and uh, make it look like the design continues on this sort of diagonal flow from top left to bottom right. And I really like how that turned out. It was that part wasn't planned, it just kind of popped into my head while I was scrapping and I thought, oh, that looks pretty good. I like that. And as per usual, if I'm going to use some shapes in my background, I am probably going to use one of those shapes for a journaling spot. It's very convenient, it doesn't interrupt the design, and I generally love the way this looks. Now I have had people ask how I know how many lines to draw, or how I fit my journaling into that spot. Part of it is because I can write quite tiny, and the other part of it is I am a writer. And so I can rephrase as needed to fit the space without too much trouble. But if you need to write it out on another piece of paper, giving yourself the same amount of space, then you can kind of practice it first and get the wording just right so that it'll fit. That is my little tricky tip for you with small journaling spots. Give it a practice on another piece of paper first. Adding in my title, which is just simply Hello Love, and I really, really, really like that one. It fits perfectly into the design. I like when my title slightly overlaps some of my photos and just kind of doesn't stand out too much. If I'm gonna go with a title that stands out, I'll go big with a title and either make it really long and go the entire length of the page, or go around a big shape, or go with a big cutout title. But if I want a small, kind of normal size title, we'll say, I do tend to try to incorporate it with my photos as much as possible so that it doesn't draw as much attention to itself. So it's either go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> and the go home is to go back to the comfort level of just tucking it in with my photos. Now I'm adding in these little tabs on the side of two of my photos just for a bit of fun, just because I thought it needed a little something extra, and I wanted to add some embellishments to this layout. I got to a point where I was like, well, does it really need anything else? No, it did not. <laughs> Need was a strong word. <laughs> I decided instead to go, do I want to add more to this layout? And of course I do. So I've added a couple of puffy stickers and then I'm gonna come in with my fussy cut and ephemera packs. So we've got at the top of this embellishment tray, which is just quite simply a condiment tray, is the ephemera pack and I have fussy cut the white line around the outside of it off. And then in the center is some fussy cut florals and hearts and rainbows from some of the pattern papers. And at the bottom is some fussy cutting from the cut aparts. There's also a small bowl in the bottom that has some teeny, teeny, tiny little hearts and musical notes and just like the small, tiny little icons that I was afraid were gonna get lost. And those came from both the pattern paper and the icon ephemera pack, but I didn't want them to get all lost in the, the bigger pieces, so I put them in a small bowl at the bottom. So I'm just grabbing the tiniest little florals that I fussy cut from the pattern paper and adding those onto my circles. And I think this detail took the layout from cute to I love it because it was cute before, it was very cute before, but these little details, this is my favorite part of scrapping, is these last few little details that make the layout come alive, that make it feel finished. And I really, really enjoy this part. So if you think a layout's done, maybe pull in some tiny florals, pull in some hearts and stars, some tiny ones, and uh, see if you can dress it up just a little bit more. See if you like that. Now, occasionally I'll have a layout where I'm looking at it and going, no, don't, don't add more. This is too much already. Like it's time to stop. But this layout was kind of calling out for more. And who am I to say no? So I absolutely went and added a bunch more of these tiny little florals, just sort of tucked around the circles and kind of mimicked in certain areas the same sort of look. So again, we have that cohesive clustering from top to bottom. But I did add a kind of sketchy hand-drawn border around the outside when I began because I knew this was going to be a scattered style layout and I wanted to make sure that it had a kind of a cohesive border or a, a border that kind of reined everything in and gave a little bit more structure 
And I really like a good hand-drawn border. And if I know I'm gonna do a scattered design, I should just go ahead and put this border in first, save myself some trouble later. Cause it is tricky to get that border on when you've already got bits and pieces going off the edge like this. So finishing up with some splattering with some Nuva Drops and with my lovely ink spray. And that's it. I hope you like it. And until next time, bye y'all.